Bert Alvord, a terrible lawman but an exceptional outlaw. Did you know that Alvord actually witnessed the legendary OK Corral gunfight? He was 15 at that time and was working in a nearby stable. This would not be his last involvement in major happenings in the Wild West. So stay tuned and let us show you how his life unfolded. Moreover, at the end of this video, you will discover how Alvord got an unexpected ending unlike most Old West outlaws. But first, here's where his story had started. So Alvord was raised in a quite reputable family. His father was a prospector, a constable, and a justice of the peace. But his family had to move from boom towns to boom towns, following wherever the mining business would prosper. Eventually, they settled in Tombstone, Cochise County. At that time, Alvord never attended any formal schooling, but witnessing how his father handled local disputes had undoubtedly made a big impression on the young Alvord. It's not clear how the naive teen working as a stable hand soon became interested in the allure of living as an outlaw. Alvord would be seen often in saloon, and but the good thing, Alvord never committed any grave misconduct, aside from being involved in public quarrels. Perhaps witnessing how the notorious outlaw John Heath was lynched made it clear to Albert how he would end up if he became one. Albert's interest in banditry got cut short as he actually became a lawman instead. Another legendary figure, a reputable lawman, Sheriff Slaughter, appointed Albert as his deputy. Surprisingly, Albert performed well, at least. The duo soon captured several cattle rustlers and brought in several wanted fugitives. In the following years, Alvord's reputation started to dwindle. His reckless actions caused an arrest to be a shootout, killing most fugitives on the spot. Then, Alvord started gambling, developed alcoholism, and even made friends with outlaws. And when Slaughter reprimanded him, their relationship turned sour. Then Alvord turned in his badge. Eventually, Alvord still tried to salvage his failing career and managed to get a position as a constable, again a deputy to different cities. But all went into the drain for his severe alcoholism and his growing association with outlaws. What put another nail in the coffin was when his father died. He left his wife, gave up a salaman, and became a full-blown outlaw. Alvord even formed a gang with the notorious outlaw he befriended over the years. Soon then, the Alvord Styles gang began cattle rustling and train robberies. However, Alvord would be soon captured and put in prison. But his friend Styles rescued him from jail. Now having regained freedom, Alvord realized that he didn't want to live the rest of his life in prison. So he turned himself in, and in exchange for a reduced sentence, he contributed heavily to the capture of another famous outlaw, Augustine Chacon. It's just that he changed his mind soon, so he escaped again with his friend Stiles, and Alvord tried faking their death, but the Arizona Rangers didn't fall to his crude deception. Soon, the duo got cornered and was finally brought to prison. After serving his two-year sentence, Alvord got released, but unlike most Old West outlaws, Alvord had a fair share of evading the law, lived like there's no tomorrow but still ended up living at peace and spent the remainder of his life as a canal employee in Panama. You've discovered an amazing life story of Bert Alvord. Now click this and discover the life and unfair ending of the legendary Jesse James.